Hi, I'm Warren Sprouse. This is the Bible Forum. We're here every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, just for you. Uh, we look at life through a biblical lens. I wanted to give you a lesson in biblical exegesis. Uh, that's a fancy word for how you interpret uh, the Word of God. I guess it's, it's for anything that you, that's written uh, that you can do. But this, this revolves around Billy Graham's daughter, Anne. Uh, she refers to herself as Anne Graham Lotz. Uh, we'll discuss that a little bit later. Uh, but she believes that God is removing himself from America. Some of us believe that he's already done that. Uh, I just spent the last 15, 20 minutes in the last video explaining how we've done this. But she's pointed out two biblical signs that she says she believes indicates that this could be the last generation of human history. Now, I'll tell you what the two signs are, as she says, and then we'll talk about them a little bit. She says the last, the two signs that Jesus gave were, number one, that Israel would be reborn. He said that the fig tree would put forth leaves and the generation that sees that is the last generation of Jews. That happened May 14, 1948. That was 68 years ago. They just celebrated their 68th birthday. Jesus went on, secondly, to say, and, quote, the generation seeing that would be the last one. So you have a sign that Israel is going to be reborn and you have the explanation that if you're alive when that takes place, that's the last generation. Now, I, I'm not sure what Jesus meant uh, because I try to think, gee, does that mean people who were born 68 years ago, uh, people who were alive 68 years ago, what if... They were older. And what constitutes a generation? So what I'm thinking is that the generation in view is the generation that is about 68 years old. Somewhere probably between 55 and 68, 69, 70, something like that. Uh, those people uh, are the generation involved. As they, if they pass off, the scene, if that generation goes away and they are only 30 years short. I was born in 1943. My brother was born in 1947. I'm going to be 73 years old this year. My brother would have been 69 this year. If he'd lived as long as his parents, he'd only live 20 more years. Do these, this generation, do they have to see all this? Do they have to understand all this? Or do they just have to be alive? And I think they're just talking about people that are alive. So here we are in Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse 14. It said, This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Right now, Annie says, the gospel is being preached to the whole world. She said, quote, I believe my lifetime is the last generation of human history because the gospel is being preached to the whole world. Here's where the exegesis comes in. Jesus didn't say when the gospel is preached to the whole world. He said when the gospel of the kingdom is preached. That has not yet happened. Now, Anne went on to discuss the power and the importance of prayer, saying that it is critical in determining the future of America. Without God's intervention, the fragmentation, the chaos in contemporary society is just going to continue. That's why I think she probably got the mantle from Shirley Dobson to be the new chair of the National Day of Prayer because she knows stuff like this. If it weren't so dangerous, theologically and spiritually, all of this 
and there's no other word for it but spiritualizing about important doctrines would be comical. We could just all have a good laugh at it. So, well, yeah, she thinks that way, but it's not true. This is destructive. This is dangerous. And Ann Lotz has said some pretty silly stuff of late. And I've always thought that she was pretty straight. I've always bragged on her. Uh, I mean, I understand she's, she's not a, a really, you know, like a fundamentalist type Christian. Uh, she's evangelical, which means it's kind of loosey-goosey. But as they go, she's smart. Uh, but recently, she's been hanging out with charismatics. That's not a smart thing to do. They don't have anything to offer. Everything from her prophecies to her creative approach to theology. She's drifted into contemplative, centering, and circle prayers. She's spiritualizing all sorts of biblical passages uh, to make them sound as though she really knows the Bible and is in touch with the heart of God. She decided, and it was reported this week, that God created Adam through prayer. You do know what prayer is, right? Prayer is communication to God from creatures to Creator. But she thinks that God created Adam through prayer. Who was he praying to? Oh, well, you know, that's just, that's just sweet and nice and gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling. Ah, you know, it's not Bible. She recently declared how she was not surprised to get a call from Shirley Dobson about taking over as chair of the National Dare Prayer because God had called her to be a messenger. She could have said a preacher. That's what her daddy said. Billy Graham calls her a preacher, even though the Bible says that women cannot hold that position. Now, I know my mama preached to me, and my wife still preaches to me. And you got women in your life preach to you, but that's not the office. <laughs> and they're good at it. They're better than a lot of guys, but that's not the office. She claims to have purposely crafted the name of her ministry because angels are God's messengers. Her ministry is called Angel Ministries. Takes the she says the the her her. her uh, the letters of her name, A G L, Ann Graham Lotz. Well, you know, her name is really Ann Lotz. <laughs> and a lot of women like to put their maiden, uh, that's okay, but this is deliberate. She wanted to get the angel in there. What would she be if she left the G out? Would she have as powerful a ministry? I know, it's marketing, it's important, it can be powerful. But God doesn't need marketing. Marketing is my strength. I had a, 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 an opportunity to take a, 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 an aptitude test when I was a young fellow. I failed it. And a year later, they offered it again where I was working, and I took it again. I failed it. And I went to the guys that were doing this thing. I was about 25 years old, and I said, why do I keep failing this test? And they laughed at me, said, son, you can't fail this test. It's an aptitude test. We're measuring for mechanical aptitude. Yeah, my dad's a welder. My uncle's, you know, I, I, I got mechanical aptitude. And they said, apparently not. And I was, oh. He said, look, you want to come in on your own time? We'll give you the whole battery of tests. Oh. That sounds like a good plan. So I came in. I was working 4 to 12. I came in one morning, and I spent two or three hours, whatever it took, and I took the whole battery of tests. I came back a week later, and they said, okay, your strengths are in sales and marketing. And I, I was never the guy that would stop and say, what does that mean? You know, because that would expose my stupidity, and I didn't want to do that. So I walked out saying, I'm not a used car salesman. I can't do that. You know, it was years later that I realized what marketing was because that's what I was doing in my church. Creating stationery, creating uh, imagery, uh, making sure 
uh, that you know the physical property looked right and that the structures were in place that the world looking at the I mean a simple thing as a missionary calling to try to get me to let him come uh, and he told me one day he said I call a lot of churches he said but I'm really surprised I said why he said I called you and I thought this was a big church Oh, it was a big church. We've got 150 people here. You know, no, he said, I thought this was a big church. I said, what gave you that idea? He said, just the way it was handled on the phone. I had a key set put in, you know, a business phone with the put buttons. And I put one in the house, in the kitchen. And one of those buttons was a personal nine. The other was church. And my wife answered the phone. And she could push a button on the intercom, and I'd pick it up, and we and they thought, oh, big odd. No, that's marketing. This shirt is marketing. It's what you do. It's a wonderful thing. But God doesn't need it. Jesus was talking about the end times in chapter twenty-four, the end of the age. The He's talking tribulation time. The gospel preached at that time is not a Christian gospel. You read the story in the book of the Revelation. The gospel at that time is going to be preached by 144,000 witnesses. They're all going to be young Jewish males. And they're going to be in the world preaching right up to the end. The Bible says more people are going to be saved than a man can count. But none of them will be Christian. Uh-oh. Did I just create another question? <laughs>